Oh boy. These things are stiff. As we left off, we got this thing mostly wrapped up. And now we got to deal with this, the back section. We got to take and basically clean the last two stubs off, make a cross member right behind the seat, and make, I'm going to call slants going down on each side to add strength in the back. And maybe we can start fitting up shocks. Just maybe. It's like cold out. Plus the wind chill isn't exactly helping, so it feels colder than it is. So I may not be down here long. So I'm gonna see how much I can get done just today. All right, so I got my cross member in place and I also got that little kick down bar thing in. I don't know what you call it. Now I just got this all mocked in place because I wanted to figure out the perfect placement just for that pipe right in there because the lower it is, the higher chance of it hitting the axle. And I think where it is right now, it's okay, but probably would need to be brought up a little bit higher. All right, I'm gonna go make another one of those tubes on that side. And then I gotta take this cradle off and then grind everything smooth for these two top rails fit everything where it needs to go and I'm just gonna tack it in place so I don't have to mess with it anymore because these are really tough to do. All right, I got everything mostly welded in place back here and it turned out fantastic. It's nice and open in the back. The frame rails do extend and come around to the side. You can see It looks like it has a fin almost, and I think that's really cool. Like I said, these are structural because without that, this back pipe will just shake and do all sorts of weird things. And that's not good because it is supporting that cross member right there. So adding two of these adds strength. It also makes it look really good. And that pipe right there is just to hold the thing up in place because without it, it likes to sag just like this. All right, so this may come as a shocker, but this is basically gonna be the new coil over for the back. Now I got these off Amazon and these are basically rated at 1200 pound a piece. So essentially it takes 1200 pounds of force to compress this spring. And I have two of them. That's gonna be 2400 pounds to make these springs move. Now that's a little bit high, but yet again, I was searching for a shock that was a little over or at nine inches tall with at least 800 pounds of force or 800 pounds to compress the spring. I found these and the only ones I could find, so I bought them because I basically needed them. These will also be in the description down below, so I'll have to give you that warning before you think about buying them. These are pretty robust springs as far as I know. But how exactly am I going to mount these? My first idea was to use the bolt right down here to have a hanger come up to bolt the lower half of the shock in and have the upper mount go right in here because this is a pretty strong point. The farther you go out, the weaker it gets because there's not really much support here. So the further in you are, the better. And I ran into one issue. Because of this bar down here, and it's actually needed for strength, I can't exactly put the shocks where I want them to be. So I thought of something else. Why don't I find thicker metal to make a spacer or a bigger bracket that comes out so far from this bolt that'll take the load of this shock 
and hopefully not bend. I think I have quarter inch plate on around somewhere which could be perfect to make a mount. So the way I see it, the lower shock bracket will be down here in line with this bolt because it's already an existing hole and it will be doing two jobs. One to hold the bottom half of the shock in and two to kind of help brace this bearing in some. I do need to brace these in more but that's going to be for another time. We have it come out so far and that's where it's going to go in. For the top, that's a different story because if I do this angle where it's standing up mostly straight, it's going to be really stiff. I mean, they're already really stiff to begin with, but I'm going to have zero movement out of this spring. And the lower I go, the worse it's going to be because the shock's not going to be able to do its job and the spring is going to be constantly compressing, which is not good. Basically, you want an ideal point. Basically, somewhere between right up here and then right down there. But most likely, right here, because when I make that bracket, it's going to be spaced up to where it's just going to be level with this cross member. And I can make ears that come out, really short ears that come out for this top bracket and have a plate go over the top to help further brace it more. And that would be perfect. And of course, I can't go in here because it'll be poking where you sit and I don't want that. And obviously it can't go far out because of the axle. So right here is the perfect spot to put these coilovers. All right, so let's take some measurements, see how far I want this thing to come out. And then let's start making the lower plate because that will be so much easier than try to make both at one time. Just make the lowers first and then make the uppers and see how it goes. Let's do it. All right, here's my method of making my shock mount. I did a couple measurements. I did grinding, cutting, drilling, so on and so forth. And this is a quarter inch thick piece of steel, which is actually this stuff. And the way it's drilled, it's basically offset or off center. That way the thick part points towards the pillow bearing. So that hole right there is for that bolt to go through for this mount and the pillow bearing. And what these little tabs do, get them spaced out a little bit. Basically this longer tab will be up against the back of this plate. That way I can weld this all the way around. And this piece is gonna get welded on top of this plate. That way it gives a little bit of support, but I'm mainly worried about this back one. Very carefully flip it. Get it lined up for you. That's basically how the shock mounts are going to be made. And honestly, it may be overkill for this application, but it should work out hopefully fine. All right, so I had an epiphany about these upper shock brackets because I wasn't too sure exactly how to do them. And that brings me up to my point on why I really don't like making brackets. Because I wanted to make them look good and I needed them to be strong. So I was thinking about it and then I thought, why don't I would take, because this is the same diameter pipe I've been using, take and draw a semicircle at the end of this flat stock, just like I did here. And I drew another line to where I feel is fit where the shocks are going to end. I drew a diagonal, that way it ain't just one big ugly piece of flat bar. That's where my hole's gonna go. That way I can weld this all the way up on the pipe for that cross member. Then have this edge be big enough so I can actually add more of this stuff on there for strength. And it'll look good at the same time. So I gotta make four of these. I got one started so far, I just gotta cut it out. And... I do have a hole saw bit for metal, but it does not like drilling through flat stock. It doesn't sound good and it doesn't really work right. So I'm going to figure out how to get this semicircle cut out. Then I got to do that three more times. So it's drill a hole, cut it out, make the semicircle, and repeat.
and hopefully that will be enough and don't screw up. This will work out just fine. So, we break away, get these cut out, and let's get these things on the go-kart. Alrighty, got these brackets in place and they are tack welded. I also did take and very crappily weld a slug on that bottom bracket to hold up against that pillow bearing. And just like that, the back end is sitting on its own with no jack. Oh yeah, I also got that header painted too. Looks nice. Yeah. Not cool, totally lame. I already kind of figured these are gonna be too stiff for it, but they do have some give, which I mean, I'm okay with. But like I said, I couldn't find anything that had a somewhat low rate, spring rate. So it is what it is. So I'm going to make a plate that goes on the backs of those mounts to help brace them in. And then I'm going to pull this whole cradle off and finish welding everything up. Put it back on, bolt everything up. I hope we can get this thing for a test drive. I hope. All right, remember how I said that this thing will go on a test drive if things pan out right? Things did not go as well as I thought. And I'm going to explain why. Let me get in frame here. All right, so I have done more of this engine than I did in the performance video. So let me explain what I have done. I made a copper head gasket for this engine. It does work. And I also took and I filed the coil. That way I advanced the timing a little bit. How much I've done, I have no idea. But there is a reason why I've done those couple things. Because I was kind of talked into doing it. And I am so happy I did. Because this engine now runs on 110 octane and this thing now is so loud I may have to get a muffler for it because it is that ear piercing and that loud and I'll be honest with you it sounds great you can tell I've been running because there's a ton of mud on it but the rear end did hold up pretty well. All this stuff I've done, actually, I had no issues with it so far. As far as I know, everything works. I will have to tighten the chain up because I have been riding this thing some. But other than that, nothing really new is happening back here. Um, everything is basically the same as what it was before. I'm actually happy how the back turned out. The back is actually crossed off my list to make this thing better. Now the problem now lies right in here. And it never dawned on me until I was watching Tyrannus Customs. And if you haven't watched them, go watch them. They actually are. They do a lot better work than I do. I don't believe you. They do a lot better work. But uh, he was building his red go-kart. And he remade the front end. That's when I missed out on a key point. See how offset those arms are? And see how the tire rod is just not right? So what's going on here is when the suspension travels, you get a ton, and I mean a ton of bump steer. Because physically this tire is doing this. Well, it's only supposed to be doing this. So the path of travel is not exactly straight. Now, I know this thing's going to be for road use. I'm not really going to take it major off-roading, but I do want the front end to handle, I mean, a lot better than what this is, because if you hit a bump, <laughs> you don't know where this thing's going. In the next video, we will be addressing the front end, so it goes from looking like the left side to basically the right side. And this is going to be an upgrade because I'm going from a three-bolt hub to a four bolt hub and also 
something I've been wanting to do for a while. Front disc brakes. This thing's gonna have a good amount of stopping power now. So again, I'm sorry for leaving this video off on a kind of bad note, even though I promised a test drive, it's not gonna happen. I know this content's been really, really dry, but like I said, I'm the only person doing this and half the time I'm trying to figure stuff out. Which is why in the beginning I showed you my process of fitting up the shocks because that was actually in depth and that's the stuff I do off camera. So if you want to see more of that, just let me know. But as of right now, I got some drawing to do because I got to basically redesign this front end to make it better. All right, so if you got any questions for me, just ask down below. Um, if you have anything to say about what to do with the front end, please let me know. I'm open to hear all sorts of ideas you guys have. I have an idea of what to do now, but if you guys have anything else that will help me out with it too, ask down below. And also subscribe too because it shows you guys are still interested in this content and you like what I do. So next video, it's front brakes, test drive, and a little something else. See you guys next time. Oh, you're still here. I got a surprise for you. Oh, yeah.